Banks have become an essential threat to our democracy. So consider this justice. Thank you for listening to Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, the number one listener-supported radio station on the Internet. Please help support this station so this battle can continue forward. Revolution Radio! The opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host. Welcome to Sacred Matrix, a divine paradigm of love and universal consciousness, with your host, Janet Kira Lesson and Dr. Sasha Lesson. Together, we transform the world. And now, here are your hosts, Janet Kira and Dr. Sasha Lesson. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Sacred Matrix on Revolution Radio at revolution.radio. And I'm your host, Janet Care Lesson, with my husband and co-host, Dr. Sasha Alex Lesson. Our producer is Thomas Becker. And our guest today, we have two guests. The first hour is Ravi Singh, and the second hour is Cassandra Van Sant. So we are going to be talking about Kundalini Yoga, Life in the Vast Lane. Celebrated teacher Ravi Singh has 45 years teaching experience and with Anna Brett is the author of 25 best-selling DVDs and an incredible book, new book. Ravi's approach is powerful, poetic, motivating, majestic, and fun. He's been called the teacher's teacher. Kundalini Yoga prompts spirit rising for super abundant creativity, beautiful breakthroughs, and expansion forever. It entrains us with the rhythm and flow of the universe to generate optimal outcomes, gain powerful insights into the interplay of life and existence, and engender new energy and new life. And we will have a fascinating interview, and we will discuss the myths and mysteries of Kundalini and Ravi's yoga and spiritual journey. He'll also share on the spot techniques to achieve higher energy states and live your life fantastic. So I have a a webpage up on AquarianRadio.com. I invite you to go and read more about today's show. Dr. Lesson, are you there? What would you like to say about I am. Oh, I, I am indeed uh, here. Um, it's, it's interesting, when I was uh, uh, studying yoga, I'm a, a Vinny yoga instructor, um, we uh, did this after inhale, we did the throat hold, then we did the belly hold, then we did the pelvis hold, and we pulsed the pelvis and imagined energy going up through our energy centers and out the top of our head. And we did this as uh, we did every pose, every time we did an exhale. Uh, that's That was the sequence we did. Inhale, our tail went back and our head went up and so forth. And so then at, toward the end of our practice, our teacher, Gary Craftsell, always had us do the airplane where you're just doing all these uh, breathing and your, and your pivot point is your pelvis. And then we laid it on our back, and everybody in that class was having kundalini, but, but Gary being, you know, it can, you know didn't, didn't define anything. It took me years later when I studied Tantra to realize, oh, my gosh, we were all having kundalini experiences at every single yoga class. So I'm really eager to hear what you've got to teach, Rob. Hey, well, thank you. It's great to be here, and I'm really happy for this opportunity. Um, as you said, I've been teaching Kundalini Yoga for 45 years, and I'm still in love with this practice after all this time, because I think it's a perfect thing for life now. Um, 
I was speaking to, to Janet the other day and she mentioned that you guys are uh, tantric yogis and the meaning yeah. Of Tantra, um, in my understanding, is that Tantra means the unseen and the seen are interwoven. And yes, uh, we really uh, need to live our lives recognizing that, uh, you know, there's more going on than meets the eye, and we need to draw upon that for successful and victorious living. So that's what uh, Kundalini Yoga helps us do. It's a, it's a technology that helps us to work on all the levels we are and many of those levels are beyond the physical in in the time we have and still have time for a life so perhaps it would be best to start with by explaining because a lot of our listeners probably don't know what kundalini is what is kundalini well well kundalini is you know i like to use dylan thomas's uh, title for one of his poems the forest that through the green fuse drives the flower and that's the perfect definition of kundalini it's life aspiring it's life itself it's that thing in us that wants to eternally evolve and grow and expand and when kundalini is present we can uh very in a very down-to-earth way be great in all things uh kundalini is the energy of energies it's the common denominator for all forms of healing uh super abundant creativity um you know, super normal capacities, uh, everything that informs the possible human, Kundalini, you know, according to the yogis, must be present. So Kundalini Yoga is a technology to help that be present every day so we can live lit up. That sounds great. Um, Dr. Lesson, what, what is your definition of Kundalini? Oh, I, I think, uh, the, 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 Rob, you did a perfect job for, for uh, me. It's the um, ability to access the singularity within the individual, which allows us to both comprehend and not be attached to the material. And uh, yeah, I, I totally in agreement with you. It's the, the spiritual, which uh, you don't, when you transcend the material, you don't leave it. You just uh, have it in a broader perspective. And and uh, this is uh, Kundalini is a uh, technology specifically as I've developed it in, in, in uh, all chakra tantras where you make sure that all dichotomies and polarities at every level of your consciousness can be bridged without being uh, abrogated and so what you get is this wonderful appreciation of everything everywhere every when and you're no longer bound by the everyday, but you can and you can still see the ecology of the everyday and manage that. And so I love what you're saying. Rob. Yeah, that was that was very right on. Um, you know, many people have this idea that that to raise your kundalini means, um, you know, to bring energy up into your head, have a kind of spiritual Fourth of July uh, experience. It's really um, it's really more prosaic. It's like I said, living firing on all cylinders. And we like to say that the chakras really don't open until the energy circulates down. And that's called integration. So, you know, it is possible to do various practices and get, you know, high and, and, and stimulate your crown chakra, etc. But, you know, we really need to integrate that experience into our lives. And uh, that's, you know, Kundalini being a tantric practice, we want to make our life our yoga and our yoga our life. It's the perfect, perfect balance. Yeah, when you bring the, the spiritual to the material, it, what it, you inevitably do is you feel loving oneness with everybody and everything. And it's like, it is the answer to the uh, destructive impulses. It's the balance. Right, exactly. Um, and it's great to have that, that overview. So, you know, many people write to us and say, oh, I've, you know, had a premature Kundalini awakening or, you know, Kundalini syndrome. And um, in all my decades of experience, I've come to see that what most people call that is really um, the absence of Kundalini. It's a compromised nervous system. It's a state of blockage. So when Kundalini is flowing optimally, we don't necessarily experience anything different. We're just, as I said, lit up and we're truly ourselves. And there's a story from the Sufi tradition. I like to t tell about that. I, uh, the Sufis were sitting around their fire and doing their mantras and breathing uh, all night. And one of the novices um, saw one of the elders uh, speaking in tongues and dancing wildly and, 
you know, just having all this phenomena. And when they were disbanding at dawn, when the service was over, he said, I'd, I'd like to be as advanced as you and experience all the things you were demonstrating. And the guy said, if I was really advanced, the energy would move through me and you wouldn't notice a thing. And that, that's our ideal, to just be an open uh, conduit for the, the energy of life itself. Yeah, you know, uh, one thing I find that when someone does indeed have a block, rather than make them wrong for the block, uh, I ask that block to speak with me and ask when it came into the person's life and how it served them and what its interests are now. And um, uh, uh, would it be willing, uh, if it's in the interest of the person, to let them explore uh, alternative uh, ways of meeting the needs of the, the a part of them that created the block. So, you know, it's it's really everything's a gift when you really look at it from the perspective of getting the kundalini flowing. Everything that you might think is a junk bummer is really a challenge and an opportunity to transcend your separation from it. That's true. You know, um, many people that were born for a destiny, that were born to walk a spiritual path, their tests are actually greater than most people's, you know, they're, um, whether it be a dark habit or something, um, because it was set up that way so that in overcoming that thing or integrating that thing, they could be in that much. Yeah. So the tests that we have are not curses. They're really blessings. And it, it is a blessing to have the test of our life right before us, whatever that may entail. What did that mean for you, Rob? What was your big test? Um, Say that again. What were your big uh, tr trials that you had, things that challenges that you had to meet in order to transcend the difficulties that those challenges posed? Well, one thing for me, um, you know, I always felt that it had to be either or the path of spirit or, you know, I was I moved to New York to be a writer in the early 70s and i always felt that it was you know either walk a spiritual path or be an artist and i was in a lot of conflict over those and um it took me a long time to realize that they can you know inform the other and you have you have to be who you are you just you can't be anything other than who you are and if you try to be that it's not sustainable so one of the biggest things for me was just you know having the self-esteem and confidence to give myself permission to be who i am and, and that's it. And just accept myself for that. And not, not think that I had to live up to some, to some impossible ideal, um, you know, what I thought a spiritual person was supposed to be. How did you get there? How did you transcend the, the, the uh, uh, social self? Well, actually, um, there's, a, there's a practice in Kundalini we call uh, Sadar Chakra Kriya. And um, I actually did it for... Um, an hour a day, sometimes two hours a day for 18 years. And um, this, you know, I, I feel that that helped me in so many ways, uh, just be who I am and integrate who I am in, into, into what my destiny is meant to be. So that, you know, a strong Kundalini Yoga practice, but that practice in particular, I, I feel really helped me, you know, kind of uh, declare myself to the world. So uh, what is the practice? Do you sit still or is it a moving practice? Yeah, you know what? Maybe I can, uh, I can teach it to the audience. Would that be okay? Oh, that would be sure. wonderful. Yes. All right. So everyone uh, sit up straight with your hips square, spine straight. And um, this is a kind of updated version of the Brahmin uh, purification technique. This goes back at least five to six thousand years this has been practiced by yogis and people of spirit for so long and things that get passed on do get passed on because they work powerfully so if you're ready to um you know bust a move to a higher order of being i would highly recommend this so this is how it's done everyone block your right nostril with your right thumb inhale through your left nostril hold the breath and pump your stomach to this rhythm as you hold the breath. Go. Wahinguru, 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 Wahinguru. Now block your 
left nostril with your right little finger lift your thumb, exhale right nostril. And now reverse the fingers, inhale left again. Hold the breath and pump your stomach for this rhythm go. Wahinguru, 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 Wahinguru. Exhale, right nostril. Okay, and relax the breath for now. So that's how it's done. That, that's actually the training wheels method. The, the, the ultimate way to do it is to move your stomach three times in graduated movements towards the spine per Wahe Guru. So what you're doing is you're inhaling left nostril, holding the breath, saying the mantra Wahe Guru, meaning the ecstasy that brings us from darkness to light. You say the Wahe Guru 16 times as you move your stomach and then you exhale right nostril. Um, so you can either pump your stomach one time per Wahe Guru or three. If you're doing a three, it would be in, in, in for Wahe Guru. So you would actually be moving your stomach 48 times in the course of 16 Wahe Gurus. In order to count 16 Wahe Gurus, you can just break, create a rhythm of four groups of four, four groups of four. And that's so you don't need to count. So that um, your eyes during this are one tenth open, looking down and in towards the tip of your nose. Um, that's in the book, our new book, uh, Kundalini Yoga, Life in the Vast Lane. I believe you guys have it on your site and a link here. Um, hey, you great. That's wonderful. I, yes, yeah. I'm going to do this some more. Thank you. That's really cool. <laughs> so, you know, I just want to mention that, um, you know, doing your practice, whatever that may entail, is um, it's incredible. You know, I mean, we've literally waited lifetimes for the opportunity to stop the world and go within and walk a path with heart. And when presented with any spiritual practice that speaks to us, we owe it to ourself and soul to just embrace it and go for it. And doing a, a daily practice makes all the difference, all the difference. And you will see amazing transformations over time. Now, where Absolutely. does this come from? I, you know, where I does... Just, I just want to say that one thing that really works for me is to, is to start with an empty stomach, to do Ooh. yoga before you eat anything. That's important. That's super important. Also, of course, you know, if a person's four or, more, four or more months pregnant or, you know, anything like that, please, um, you know, refrain from, from pumping your stomach. Oh, yeah. So what I wanted to ask is, where did this come from? This is an ancient spiritual practice. Do you have any idea of the historical, how this yeah. came to be on the earth? It was taught by the Rishi. The Rishi is a divine sage that lived in the Himalayan regions. The Himalayan regions um, region of India and Tibet um, became the repository for a lot of ancient knowledge because it was one area that was not affected by a lot of cataclysms that happened in very various areas of the world. So the, uh, the refugee flow from a lot of advanced cultures went there and a lot of the ancient knowledge was preserved. Um, my teacher, Yogi Bhajan told me that he has seen scrolls that were rewrites of more ancient scrolls going all the way back, according to him, a million years. So, you know, I know that's outlandish, but that's what he said, and, and I believe it, that this stuff was, you know, uh, these technologies were around not only in history as we know it, but before history as we know it. And uh, there were highly evolved cultures that uh, practiced these things. So that's, you know. Absolutely. It's not, it's not far out at all. The evidence, uh, you know, I've studied this stuff it vastly supports you. Uh, a million years ago, already the uh, Atlans and the uh, m m m other people from the Federation had landed and were contesting the planet with the reptilians. So they were here. High civilization was in, in Tibet from the get-go. So that's right. so where this stuff comes from in history, as we know it, is from the ancient sages that came down and taught people to... Uh, but before that, it's older than, than we can imagine. And ultimately, it comes from, it's part of the fabric, fabric of the universe itself. It's the, 
It's, these things are the, a gift from the gods to ease human suffering. That's, a, that's what they are. Right. So then the, the Indian lore is full of, of stories of the gods, and they, they brought this down to us. The gods are like extraterrestrials or whatever, from my understanding. Well, yeah, who, who, who these people were. Some people would say they're energies of the universe. Some people would say they're um, more advanced beings who taught people to, uh, mm -hmm. you know, improve themselves. So it, the, the jury's out on who exactly the gods were. But I, but I do feel that these things came from um, some highly, highly involved beings for our benefit. Yeah. Out, out of so we... We know from the his, from the Sumerian stuff that we uh, studied that Inanna, uh, known as uh, as Shakti, and in, uh, in uh, she owned uh, Harappa and Mohenjo Daro on the Indus Valley in what's now Pakistan, and we know her practices uh, because they're the ones that were handed down very specifically to us. And the idea was to have people have a. a a confluent field of a, a, a where they're just where you become one with the beloved and you transcend your separate self sense and that's when you make a baby that you really want and it's got all the love of two people so that was her central idea and she established te temples all over uh, both the Indus area and also uh, Mesopotamia. Yeah, that's interesting because the first um, spiritual practices among humankind were. Um, worship of the divine feminine. And um, in fact, it's said that Kundalini is considered a feminine force and that in order to invoke it, we need to um, honor the feminine and, um, you know, in every way that could be interpreted. Absolutely. And, and, Go ahead. and well, Kundalini is used by people who uh, do deep channeling. And, uh, and basically, the the woman is put into a, a high state of continuous kundalini uh, release, and she's able to channel the singularities that benefit her and the planet. Right. You know, speaking of uh, singularities, you know, where the new physics is going and where things like kundalini yoga have come from are kind of meeting right now. And so right. the only difference between something like Kundalini Yoga and the new physics is that that is an intellectual pursuit and something like Kundalini is based on experience. And we're in the Aquarian age and, and it's the age of experience that we don't, we don't need a person anymore to tell us what the truth is. We need to experience it ourselves. And this experience is, um, you know, ready and waiting for everyone. And, I, I do feel that um, reality right now is more moldable or plastic than it's ever been, and that we can more and more create our own realities. I agree. Yeah, it's when people practice Kundalini, you can just see they glow. And it's like it's the it's the uh, catching of charisma, the happiness and joy of people that practice uh, Kundalini yoga is catching and spreading. Right. That's what I think. Yeah, would it be okay if I give one more little exercise to your audience? Oh, we'd love. Oh, it. I would love that. So I just want to do something real simple that you can do. Um, you know, if uh, on your on your coffee break or sitting in your car or anytime, if you need a quick lift. So everyone, again, sit with your um, hips square and feet flat if possible, spine straight, and have your um, just have your hands on your knees. Or thighs. Now, everyone, breathe through your nose only. Everyone, inhale, raise your inhale through your nose, raise your shoulders up towards your ears, and exhale, lower your shoulders. And now, continue vigorously, just for about thirty seconds. Inhale up, exhale down, and let's begin. Really breathe. Draw on the breath. Inhale, shoulders up, exhale down. Don't hold back. That's it. Just a little bit more. You have everything to gain and nothing to lose. Ten more seconds. Okay, good. Now inhale, raise your shoulders up and relax. And now everyone just sit with your eyes closed and feel how it feels when energy is present. And listen passively to my words as you meditate. Now you know that energy 
is not simply the province of sun, air, and wind. It also flows in us. And when we have a relationship with energy, the impossible becomes possible. And we were, we were meant to have a relationship with energy. And uh, that's part of our destiny. Where energy comes from, source, is where we're going. Okay, everyone. And uh, there you go. Awesome. Um, I wanted to address the, let's see, if one Googles Kundalini, Kundalini, they find the term premature Kundalini awakening. So what is that referring to? And is that something that people need to be concerned about? Um, well, if a person, um, essentially that means a person is running more energy than their nervous system or psyche can handle. So that means that their nervous system has been compromised is, is, is in the case of most people are if their emotional blocks are wounding, you know, are not letting energy flow. So what many people call a premature Kundalini awakening means that they've somehow activated some energy, some life energy, but they're not able to accommodate it properly. So what they need, the ultimate, you know, anodyne for that would be Kundalini yoga because Kundalini yoga is all about preparing our nervous system, opening energy flows, uh, putting ourselves in an optimal state so that we can, you know, um, allow more energy to flow through us and expand the scope of our lives. So, um, you know, people get sometimes get freaked out when they experience more energy than they're used to, but that's a good thing. It means it's trying to flow. So Kundalini Yoga would be the perfect thing for that, just to open things up and get in balance, get yourself in balance. And... Um, so basically, I find that my job often as a Kundalini yoga teacher is to demystify the concept of Kundalini because people have all these mystical ideas about what it is, but it's really just down to earth. You know, we are, we are human energy systems. Energy was meant to flow in us. We're meant to live inspired. We're meant to live our destiny. And in order for that to happen, Kundalini was meant to flow. So let's, let's embrace it and let's do what's required to get there. So how did you get started in practice? I mean, how did you discover this? What was going on in your life that yeah, I was uh, Yeah, that's that's a great question. I was a student in uh, Chicago in 1972 at a university, and I had a comparative religion class, and we would have different guests that would come in about and talk about their modality. And one day um, a person came wearing a turban with a long beard and taught a Kundalini class, and I was just blown away. I'd been practicing Hatha Yoga and TM and thought I had it all covered, but it, but this was what I'd been waiting for. It was so me immediate, so powerful. I remember driving home after that. I had to pull over because the colors of everything were so vivid and intense. And um, this was this was what I'd been looking for. Um, you know, I felt that a lot of the teachers that came here in the '60s, you know, they they I f felt that the, you know many of the Indian teachers sort of suspected that the you know western bodies and western psyches weren't quite ready for the the good stuff and i i did feel that yogi bhajan who was my teacher uh just you know said you know what i'm just these people need something they're they're into drugs they're just they need something you know powerful and i'm gonna let the cat out of the bag because traditionally kundalini yoga was not meant to be taught publicly it was only meant to be taught to the select few you know um but he felt that, you know, this is the onset of the Aquarian age and secret practices are no longer indicated that everyone should have access to everything. And uh, here we go. So he was uh, uh, brave enough to let it out of the bag. And that's how I discovered it. And uh, I haven't looked back. I've been doing it all these years. Wonderful. Sasha, you have a question or comment? Just, uh, you know, it's like once you understand the principles of uh, how to do it physically, it's got many ramifications. Let me just tell you about one as a Tantra teacher, that if you will go inhale, throat hold, exhale, belly hold, pelvis hold, punch, pulse, 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 and you're a man, you can uh, uh, stop ejaculation. That is, you can continue making making love uh, uh, with your lingam still uh, not discharging as long as you choose by learning how to manage uh, this 
breath in your body in a real in the way you can also apply this to anything riding the bike or running inhale throat held exhale belly hold pelvis held pulse 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 and you'll have orgasms while you're running or riding your bike or swimming in the ocean or anything and you don't need anybody else you got you you can always have fun <laughs> that's lovely that, you know, so, that is, that's an example of um you know there's things that we can we can take from yoga and apply it to every part of our lives and you know yoga is not something we do when we're on our yoga mat and just that's it uh, it's meant to be done you know all day all day long um and also what you were saying about how to redirect energy i mean that's that's a huge part of being on the path you know we can't they say there's no freedom that's free you know we have to live accountable to the fact that you know en energy may be infinite but we we have a finite amount to uh, um attain escape velocity in this lifetime to move out of the fate and into a destiny so we need to live in a way um to make conscious decisions around how we use our energy. And uh, that was a very good example that you get. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you. Yes, you got, you know, respect your own life and you'll respect all life. Right, exactly. So, um, you know, the things that um, require lots of energy that, that people squander a lot of energy, I, you know, I feel are, are substance abuse, um, Emotional upheaval, um, you know, and and mental mental worry. You know, people just they expend a lot of energy through worrying and fantasizing, and um, you know. So the part a lot of what yoga does is gives us ways to recycle some of this energy, redirect it towards our own, you know, expansion. And uh, you know, we we say in yoga, you can either you know suffer a fate, and that's living by the whim of karma, or manifest a destiny. And that's when you self-determine, determine you are a self, and live accordingly. And it's, it's truly a miracle when someone can do that. And we were meant to do that. Yeah, you know, part of the secret is to, is to get kinesthetic consciousness. In uh, Vinny Yoga, we feel the movement of each and every single bone in our spines in sequence. <laughs> and when you are focusing inward kinesthetically like that you don't worry <laughs> you don't you, you, pretty <laughs> soon you 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 have transcended the material right and that's you know it's another thing um many spiritual paths try to do an end run around the body but you know saint i believe it was saint paul that said the soul can only be experienced through the body um you know as humans in bodies we're in a very special position you know, these bodies are really the doorway to the infinite. And the tantric yogis of old basically viewed the body as their secret lab. The body, you know, is endogenous, meaning that we can create any substance in our body through our glandular system, etc. cetera, um, you know, through our brain chemistry. And uh, the body really is um, something very special. We need, we need to respect it. Wow. So this is a consciousness so, you know, practice, and you can become an awakened and enlightened. Can you talk? Can you talk more about how one uses these, this tantric or this yogic practice to become conscious and aware of existence beyond the three-dimensional physicality? Well, that um, that brings up a lot. One thing is, you know, they call Kundalini Yoga the Yoga of Awareness, and I feel that awareness, you know, is the amplitude of the impulsation of the pituitary or third eye. The third eye is the Ajna chakra, which is the etheric counterpart to the pituitary or master gland. Um, when we start meditating and doing certain practices, we increase the amplitude of the pulsing of the of the third eye, and we become aware of more. We 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 begin to understand how things are interrelated and time and space um, are no longer hindrances and we can see beyond and feel beyond and pick up on the subtle prompts from nature and the universe. Um, and that, that's awareness and that's consciousness. You know, when I, when I first started meditating, 
the first thing I did was transcendental meditation when I was about 18 years old. And I would meditate religiously, you know, 20 minutes twice a day. And within one month of having started meditating, I was making some hot dogs in the oven. And all of a sudden it was like I woke up. I said, wait a second, what am I doing? I can't put that in my body. And I've been a vegan ever since. Um, and that's how awareness works. We suddenly become aware of more and see how things are interconnected. And um, you talked about, you know, awakening. I think, um, you know, many people have a lot of misconceptions about what enlightenment is. Um, you know, it's not like it. there's, you know, I know in the Zen tradition, you know, people have a an aha moment where all of a sudden they're enlightened. But I feel that, um, you know, that's, that's a slight misnomer that enlightenment is, is an ongoing process. And even that we might be enlightened one day, but there's no guarantee that we're going to be enlightened the next day. So we need to stay on it. Uh, Joseph Campbell said that to exist is to be in process and we need to stay accountable, um, you know, every day of our lives because we can't just assume that we're going to, uh, you know, be in the same place tomorrow. And that's, I feel why it's important to do a spiritual practice every day to keep ourselves in that positive expanded place because, um, Again, there's no guarantee we're not going to we're going to be there the next day. So um, to be enlightened, I think, is just to recognize that um, we have to be humble. We have to be accountable and we have to stay on it. And uh, we're never home free until, uh, you know, uh, we're beyond this body. So what do you do when you start going unconscious? What's the best thing to do to get conscious um, again? Well, there's, you know, like the. The Sodarshan Chakra Kriya, that's an amazing thing. You know, I have, I have a routine that I do every day. Um, you know, I, I get up at, uh, you know, 4.30 and, and meditate for an hour or two. And then I do physical yoga. And then um, we do, I do something called Sat Kriya that, that's in our book that's very powerful. Um, it just sort of uh, keeps all the chakras aligned. And, um, you know, it just ascertains that we're not sort of a slave to the the lower chakra prompts, you know. Now, it's a misnomer to think that the lower chakras are somehow bad and the higher chakras are good. They can't exist without the other. They qualify each other. Um, the, the lower chakras help us to, to bring our higher aspirations down to earth and make it real. And the higher chakras, um, you know, make life more than just one dimensional. So they, they need each other. But um, the lower chakras are all about, you know, um, our our mind, our, our biological needs, as well as our, you know, biological imprinting. And so it's very important that we um, pay a lot of attention to those. For instance, most, I find that the most predominant block is in the, is in the first chakra. The first chakra is all about, um, you know, survival, um, you know, self-absorption, um, needs getting met. It also tends to, uh, you know, magnify threats. And so many people live their lives um, kind of slaves to the first chakra mentality. And that's, uh, so what we need to do is inv invoke the polarity of that, with, which is the crown chakra. And in order to, when we do that, we have an, we get an over, we get our overview back. And um, the way, you know, there's many methods to invoke the crown chakra, but they're all, uh, you know, equally valid. So every chakra has its polarity and when we know the techniques for each of the chakras, we can, for instance, when we're dealing with second chakra issues, we can work on the sixth. When we're dealing with third chakra issues, we can work on the fourth, and etc. cetera. And uh, that works out very well. It's interesting you mentioned that you get up at 4 a.m., and Edgar Casey said that that was like a very magical time. And I know Dr. Lesson gets up really early. What What is that? Is that some kind of... Spiritual enhancement when you get up at different times well, that are unusual. We call it the Amrit Vela, the ambrosial hours, and it in the pre-dawn hours, um, it's a very potent time to meditate or pray or do a spiritual practice. First of all, the sun is in effect um, sixty degrees below the horizon, more or less, and sixty degrees is a lever into the psyche. Also, in astrology, you know, sixty degrees is called a sextile. It's a very propitious angle. Um, so when we meditate pre-dawn, we can clear out a lot of gunk from our subconscious mind so that it doesn't, uh, you know, compromise us in our decisions all day. Um, when, when our subconscious is not cleared 
it makes our lives very murky. So it's very important to meditate and clear that stuff out every day. Otherwise, we get overloaded. And again, life becomes very murky. They also say that um, in the pre-dawn, the, the kind of magnetic influence of the saints and sages of the ages is most accessible, that we can tune into the subtle bodies of the saints and sages of the ages from our chosen lineage or any lineage and really have a communion, communion with them. And so when, when in the pre-dawn hours, that's the perfect time. Also, the um, so-called psychic airwaves, you know, from the area that you're in, uh, you know, people are still sleeping, so there's not, there's, there's more of a clear, uh, you know, direct line, hotline to infinity, as it were. So those are some reasons. Also, the lone meridians are most open, 3 to 5 a.m., so the breathing you do, you get the most out of it. So those are just some reasons that it's a very uh, powerful time to meditate. And one of the biggest reasons is that, you know, you're basically offering up your ego to honor spirit. You know, when, when you get up at 4 or 4.30, your ego protests, oh, maybe I'll just stay in bed today or whatever. You know, it's in, and when we, when we overcome the, uh, the pull of the ego, we're making, we, we're getting amazing, you know, merit on the spiritual path. Awesome. Sash, you have a question or comment? Oh, I, I really uh, like. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I really like what you said, uh, and I just realized that you know, in the kind of yoga that we do, this there's some specifics, but it's like the whole model of a person's uh, workout is like your picture, uh, Rob, of life. And so, in a good Vinny yoga workout, the first thing you do is you inventory what is there any place that needs to be get special attention and so forth. And then you do a warm-up. Whatever poses you're going to do, you go in and out and in and out and in and out. Forward bends always proceed and follow backward bends, lateral bends, and twists because the body would rather go forward. Whenever you do a forward bend, you breathe out. Whenever you're doing a backward bend where your chest goes up and your tailbone uh, goes back, you breathe in. And so that once you get that, what you're then doing is following your, you know, all the different postures and what they do and so forth. Uh, and, you, you, and, you know, little tricks like lateral bends make you able to do a deeper twist. But then you're on your own. You follow your body. What does it say to do now and now and now and now? And what's the counter pose for that to rebalance? And so it's like life. It's just like, I love, Rob, your idea of you've got to be in the now and really do it in this moment. And that's, that's what Kundalini and, and Vinny Yoga do, shows you. Yeah, what you're describing is called the concept of Kriya. You know, in some traditions in India, the, the master would, you know, touch you on the forehead and give you what they call Shakti Pag, which is energy, to kind of in, begin to invoke the Kundalini. And then your practice is to sit and just let the energy work through you. In fact... Many of the yoga traditions were the, the spontaneous kriyas of the masters they preserved or other people preserved and it was passed on. Uh, when we're in the womb, for instance, they say that the 108 classical yoga poses came out of the um, poses that the developing fetus does in the womb to, to, move, wow. energy, to move energy <laughs> through the system. And so, um, you know, many people are blocked because of, you know, birth traumas and developmental trauma. So when you give yourself permission to just let the energy move the way it wants through your yoga practice, you're, re you're literally rebirthing yourself. Wow. That's awesome. So, uh, Robbie, how would your life be different had you not discovered yoga? Well, you know, I was, um, I was a poet and a blues guitarist in Chicago, and I, literally, I don't think I'd be alive right now because, um, you know, I, I was starting to go down that road of, you know, um, the whole rock and roll lifestyle and everything. And, um, you know, I have a moon in Pisces in my astrology. I'm, I'm an indulgent person. And I just feel that if I had not found this path, I, w I probably wouldn't be alive. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm very, very grateful. And, um you know, I, I um, try to, you know, keep that gratitude every day when I do my practice and realize that every day is an opportunity and that really won't come again. So we need to, to be on it and um, do everything we can to honor spirit. So I, I'm uh, 
I'm really glad that I, I was able to, uh, you know, make that turn, you know, towards destiny. Now, who is uh, the, the, this, what's her name, Anna? Yes, she Anna. Co- uh, who is Anna and, and what's her role in your Anna's life? My, yeah, Anna's my life partner, and um, um, we, uh, we teach together, and we wrote this book together, and, um, you know, we're, we're kind of the perfect balance. Anna's a, an amazing athlete and dancer and uh, knows the body inside out and just taught me amazing things, and I... Uh, I'm the poet and, uh, you know, um, have more of a spirit, spiritual, uh, sensibility. So, you know, we've kind of put our heads together and, you know, um, we, we feel that in order to honor Kundalini yoga, we wanted to present it as a, as an all body experience. And we, we, for every exercise in the book, we have alignment tips and visualizations and, um, you know, I just want to make sure that people honor the practice by doing it correctly. So we've brought both of our strengths to this, and we've kind of uh, blended them to create the, this project. We, we wrote, this project took ten years to uh, to manifest. When we first started, at, we first put the first word to paper in two thousand and seven, and we thought it would be a quick turnaround. But the universe had other plans. So you know, at every stage, we we said, okay, we're ready. But the universe said, no, you could do better. So we kept up in the ante, and uh, we're very grateful that we were able to to manifest this. Hey, so what's your title? Go ahead. Wait, now let's get this book. What's the title? Tell us about it. Yeah, it's called the Kundalini Yoga Book: Life in the Vast Lane, and um, it's available on Amazon and our website raviana.com. And uh, you know, we have lots. Uh, we tell our, our our personal stories in it. We have lots of chapters. We have a chapter. Uh, about uh there's one chapter about how to strengthen your magnetic field to be more you know charismatic and attract opportunities and you know be be a a brighter being we have a chapter about uh navel power because the navel chakra is really a in a um you know it's the default setting for personal transformation your navel has to be developed to move forward Mm -hmm. rather than back so we talk a lot about that um we have a chapter called methods of the masters which are Techniques that, that were done in Kundalini Yoga, but what also practiced in many throughout history. Um, there's a practice, you know, taught by the uh, Desert Fathers in the in the Middle East, in the you know around the, the time of Jesus. There's practices uh, that Buddha taught in practice. So it's really the scope of the book is pretty pretty vast. From wow. my understanding, when you when one achieves a certain level and it has a kundalini awakening like I don't, i'm not sure i don't know the nuances that you two do but i've i've had my own experiences and there was a point where i went all the way to source and reconnected and had a communication <laughs> i came back down here and of course you go conscious and unconscious but from my understanding we can begin to remember who we are and where we came from and and why we we get our mission and and the reason we came down and incarnated into human form. Is that something you can uh, relate to? Is that something that you find that happens with certain people? Well, not, you know, not everyone um, has a path they're meant to walk. Not everyone has, has a, a mission. And if we're lucky enough to be called upon by the universe or, or have incarnated to do a certain task, we're very lucky and very blessed. You know, there's a lot of old souls on the planet right now, but not all of them are in a position to remember what they're here for or to act upon it. So those of us who are lucky enough to be given a clear, uh, you know, sense of purpose and to have that connection with source are very blessed. So, yes, um, at different times in our lives, we will, um, you know, feel acutely connected to source and get a very clear, you know, very clear sense of why we're here and what to do or the universe will will not just say hey you know remember why you're here and uh it's it's just it's a good sensation of grace it's a really good uh, you just broke up a little bit but let's uh let's see yeah i said i said it's it's a, when we have an experience like that it's a dispensation of grace it's the only mm-hmm. way to really describe it Thank you. Yes. Um, so 
how would you recommend our listeners begin a practice? What's like this first step? Well, I think um, either, you know, if they'd like to get our book or we also have DVDs or streaming media on our uh, on Amazon or our website, raviana.com. That's R-A-V as in Victor, I-A-N-A.com, raviana.com. You know, it's very good to do a, a DVD or a stream because you get to see, you know, how it's done and you get the rhythm and pacing of it and understand how the breath is 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 being done so that would be really good um but the book is good too so you know my advice to someone is just you know just start just you know open the book or turn on the dv and just just start even if you're willing to do five minutes you know it will create a momentum that will uh that will continue and once you start a a practice like this it'll be your friend for life it'll never let you down your practice will never let you down well, you started 45 years ago. Uh, back then, people didn't even know what yoga was. What was that like for you to be a pioneer in the times when this was uh, seen as such a, you know, something outside of the box and that most people didn't even have an awareness of? Well, you know, it was a very exciting time, and I used to fantasize about time like now when everyone knows what yoga is and almost everyone does yoga or knows someone that does. So in those days... Um, People literally didn't know the difference between yoga and yogurt. They just thought some fringy out there thing. Um, (laughs) And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's no accident that yoga is so popular because, you know, we're we're evolving ever more quickly. And there's a momentum being created. And yoga is the perfect tool, you know, for life as we know it. And I do believe that yoga in America is evolving even faster than it did in India because – you know, everything is sped up here and that uh, we're also willing to, you know, innovate on tradition and, uh, you know, do what works. And that's a very tantra concept. What I see happening in America, you know, just like Sasha and I can talk about yoga and have so many commonalities. uh, I believe that all of yoga is headed towards a grand synthesis of yoga, that there's going to be a, a, uh, you know, just a blending of styles that that, something that's truly Aquarian and truly American is going to be created. Um, and it's very, it's very exciting. Wonderful. Sash, you have a final comment? We're coming up in the last four minutes. Oh, I, I, I absolutely love uh, the opportunity that uh, yoga creates for a, a confluent field at, uh, where you become one with the other people that you're moving and breathing with. And you have the direct experience of not just your individual consciousness, but a oneness, a, a actual physical feeling of a, a, a of, of being one with the people in the yoga class because you've been breathing in and out moving it the same way I mean, you know athletic teams get that same feeling too but just let yourself be conscious of it next time you take a have a good yoga class and you'll know exactly what i mean it's just that's how people everywhere can feel toward each other and that's what we sort of think of it as sending it out from your heart chakra sending it out to everybody in the world like make a grid of light right that's that's really true you're talking about group consciousness and you know group consciousness is really the answer you know we're all in this together and it's br- make it or break it time for ourselves as humanity so we need we need to work together and yoga is an amazing tool to help us get there wow well, we have like three minutes left, so we're coming up on an election. <laughs> How can we do this shift in consciousness before we self-destruct? Um, any thoughts or ideas on that? Because uh, it's an exciting time. We live in very, very interesting times. Well, you know- We've got to go for consensus. Consensus. We've got to get something that works for everybody. Right. We've got to try to keep We've got to try to keep our hearts open and keep our frequency raised and, uh, you know, listen to people. And um, I do believe that everything is for a reason. And um, we just have to try to, um, you know, keep it together so we can all work together. And I, I believe that if we if we raise our own consciousness, we'll bring everyone with us. Right. What so about you, let's- Janet? What do you got to say? 
Oh, well, I don't know yoga like you do, but I find myself, I was, my sister had, a, her back was um, out, and so I, I we went to, at the hotel recently, and I started doing movements, like, spontaneously, and even just the short time, you know, we're like 10, 15 minutes, and I, I got up, and somehow I knew what to do. And I felt much better. I had a lot of body pains because I was running a conference and I didn't have time to even pay attention to my body. So even if you don't know what you're doing, you don't really have to do something formal. If you just listen to your body and respond to it, I, I felt, and she was doing the same thing. We both got up, up off the floor and went, wow, we feel great. And uh, that was about all we had time for. Okay, last minute is to you, Rob. What would you like to say, your website and all kinds of stuff? Well, I do want to say that if anyone has a life or physical issue that they would like some guidance around, uh, please email us through our website, raviana.com. That's R-A-V-I-A-N-A. -A, and we'll be glad to uh, try to give you some guidance or an appropriate meditation or, or exercise for, for your issue. I do hope that everyone uh, goes to Amazon, our website, and looks at the book, uh, the Kundalini Yoga book, Life in the Vast Lane. Um, one... one into your life well we're out of time thank you so much for coming on the show it was wonderful thank you we'll, we'll be back everybody after this commercial break with Cassandra Van Zandt thank you Rob enjoy it namaste Nicholson and a few good men. You can't handle the truth. Well, you can, and Event Horizons will give you those truths so when you're mad as hell and not going to take it anymore from that memorable scene in Network, you'll know just what to do. We will draw you in and become your news addiction at Event Horizons. Join us Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to noon Eastern Time at freedomslips.com at Revolution Radio. Our world team members are Dennis Fetcho, John Ilias, David Dunger, Hila Cass, MD, Melanie Richton, Jim Mars, Paula Harris, John Trello, Maria Payan, Christopher Husser, DODDS, Jonathan Orchard, and me, your anchor, Dr. Robin Falco. You decide not to volunteer, it will not be held against you in any way. Sounds dangerous. It is. Very dangerous. Count me in. And that's right here at Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, where information never sleeps. Is your data safe? Do you have the necessary information to assist you in confidently living through just about any survival situation? Is survival and gardening, off-grid living, medical knowledge, or even natural or man-made EMPs on your list of personal concerns? Do you have your documents and your personal information in a safe place in your hands where you know where it is? Well, check out our preloaded EMP-proof thumb drive. Over 3 gigs of survival documents and how-tos, plus the USDA offline food preservation website, and much, much more, including a surprise bonus we just can't tell you about here. With plenty of room left over to store your most important documents. Imagine if a mega virus or a computer failure took out your bank, or all the banks for that matter. Are your banking records safe in your hands so when they get things fixed and repaired, you can say, hey, look, this is what I had. You have it. I want it back. Is your personal data safe? Family records, addresses, phone numbers? We'll squeeze on over to 
freedomslips.com. Yes, that's www.freedomslips.com. Click the banner on the homepage for the EMP proof bullet drive to get the full scoop of everything that we offer. So, folks, keep your data safe for your peace of mind. Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. You don't need to expect us. We're already here. In breaking news, a visiting Syrian diplomat reported today that their population is evolving rapidly and advancing into a fifth dimensional consciousness. They are seeking peace with all cosmic cultures, which may mean that the Earth will be asked to join the prestigious Galactic Federation of Light Alliances. Please join Debbie West and Michael Hathaway on Lost Knowledge, Saturdays, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in Studio A. For the latest breaking news on the Star Visitor's peaceful contact and the ongoing project of cleansing the Earth. This is the people's war. It is our war. We are the fighters. Fight it then. Fight it with all that is in us. And may God defend the right. Warning, warning. We gotta stop them! They're gonna kill us all! See how the trouble you've started? Be they the government, be they industry, be they organized labor, be they anyone, or human beings! Time when the operation of the machine becomes so odious, makes you so sick at heart, that you can't take part, you can't even passively take part, and you've got to put your bodies upon the gears and upon the wheels, upon the levers, upon all the apparatus, and you've got to make it stop! You've got to win the day to the people who run it, to the people who own it. But unless you're free, the machine will be prevented from working at all. Revolution Radio of FreedomSlips.com, the number one listener-supported talk radio station, throwing ourselves upon the gears of the machine. Revolution Radio, where information never sleeps. You calm down the thunder, well now you've got it. Right. You tell them I'm coming, and hell's coming with me, you hear? Radio. Radio every Wednesday 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Studio B for Momentary Zen with host Zen Garcia at freedomsteps.com, the people station. The opinions expressed on this radio station, its programs, and its website by the hosts, guests, and call-in listeners or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com, its staff, or affiliates. You're listening to Revolution Radio, FreedomSlips.com, 100% listener-supported radio, and now we return you to your host. Hello? Is Janet there? Hello. Hi, sorry, I had it on mute. Aloha and welcome back to the Sacred Matrix on Revolution Radio. And I'm your host, Janet Kara Lesson, and Dr. Sasha Alex Lesson is my co host, producer Thomas Becker. And this is the second hour with Cassandra Von Zant. But before we get back to our show, I'd like to remind everybody to please go over to the donation button on revolution.radio. 
and make your donation because we greatly appreciate your donations and your donations help us stay on the air and bring you wonderful shows like ours and other ones. There's many, many other shows on Revolution. So, doc, uh, yeah, before I get back to Dr. Lesson, Thomas Becker, where are we in our fundraising this month? Uh, we are actually got six hundred and twenty-three dollars ready, and that is awesome. If you ask me, awesome, thank awesome, you, folks. Awesome. Please donate some more. <laughs> That's wonderful. So our second hour, we have we just got back from a um, an expo that we produced. Doctor Lewis and I produced called Stargate to the Cosmos Expo, and we had about fifty speakers and. They, we non-stop panels, and we recorded everything. It's going to take us a while to get it all out there. But we're going to have some streaming links and um, DVD sets in the next uh, month or a few weeks. We'll start getting stuff out. But one of our presenters was Cassandra Von Sant. She's a psychic medium, channel educator, celestial and animal artist, spirit photographer. And her journey had began... 25 years ago, after she had a harrowing near-death experience. This life-altering event served to become the rite of passage which awakened her latent psychic abilities. Since that fateful day, Cassandra has sought answers and insights from the unseen realms of spirit guides, angels, and extraterrestrials whom she encountered while out of body. And eventually, a soul-searching endeavor led to the refinement of Cassandra's highly intuitive gifts the main modality, modality she now works through our cleric buoyance, mediumship, and channeling. As the celestial interpreter of the star families, she also speaks and interprets the intergalactic language. So, Dr. Lesson, would you like to say anything before we bring on Cassandra? Yes, yes, I would. It's like, uh, it, it, I'm Cassandra, I'm so glad to, to again, uh, be able to hear you. We started our conference together at the very beginning uh, we had a group for people that were up that early that wanted to uh, just uh, make contact so Thursday morning Elizabeth April and uh, Geraldine uh, and uh, yeah Roscoe yeah and and uh, we we and, and Cassandra and I had our um, start there was a couple of other people there too but there it was right at the beginning and uh, so uh I'm delighted uh, to uh, again uh, hear what you've got to share. What's what's the latest and the most important thing you'd like us to know, Cassandra? Oh, hi there, um, Janet and Sasha. It was so amazing to be at that, that expo. I learned so much, and I hope I imparted some knowledge to people also. So that's just, you know, we give give and take. So all of the experiencer group that I was in, it, I had a major breakthrough, and you know that. You were, you were part of that. That has helped me unleash uh, any inhibitions about talking about what's, what's going on. And that was one of the greatest gifts that I could ever have. Um, another thing that happened was uh, I had had a recall through, actually, uh, Geraldine had said something to me about a regression she was in, and she had said that I was in it also, in what she had remembered. I know. And I said, uh, well, okay, you know, tell me about this. So we were, it was in our, the Colorado conference that we had just gone to in August. And she was telling me about uh, what had encounter, or what had happened in that encounter. And I said, well, just, you know, just hold on for a minute because I need to go and talk to my people and get the rest of the story because I, I wanted to come back with some things that to see if she could, uh, confirm, you know, that that is what she had gotten in her regression. And when I did talk to her and told her about the things that I had saw, she did confirm what I, I had actually uh, recalled. And that has just set me on a whole new path. And I, I want 
to, uh, I, I told a dear friend of mine yesterday, and he just said, well, welcome to the rabbit hole. <laughs> so that's, that's what has happened so far. And for me to recall any kind of um, abduction, it, I would assume that since I do all of this, that I do have some type of abduc- abduction experience, but I don't recall any of it. Um, but this has just started a whole a whole new set of memories, and these are not so much. It, I mean, there are not ET abductions as much as uh, from military type abductions. Right, and there seems to be a lot of them. Like a lot of people start with the ET type abductions, and then over time, they begin to realize that the military has been involved, but what we find, or and what we find, is that the military really want to know what the experiencers are getting into. Exactly. And so they often take it. They know who the experiencers are. Um, When I was on Johnson Atoll back in the late, um, let's see, was it 96, 97, 95, I ended there, uh, yeah, looking back, I realized they knew exactly. It's like they have a database of experiencers, and it might be what's going on because this agreement was made back in the day with Ike and other presidents that they were allowed to take us, and perhaps they did receive information about who they were taking or which families they were taking. So it all makes sense on some level that, yes, uh, Geraldine saw you and knew you were there. Because often one party will remember the other party would be mind wiped. But once you uh, begin to realize what happened, it's like memories are going to start coming back to you more and more. Probably. Well, it's, it's it's even more than that. You uh, that is you can take Geraldine's power and her good heart, and when you want to remember something, you can uh, uh, tap that because she's given you a a, a confluence. Uh, so you know you you're. You, that's wonderful. You're going to remember more and more, and I understand exactly what's happening. This is a very good thing, and feel our support too. What I'm getting. glad that you can understand. Um, I I don't understand it right off the right off the bat, but I'm I know that when the memories come back, which they have been, um, I just record them and uh, look at it and you know, go on to the next. So I, uh, a lot of things happen. I mean, most people don't realize when they go to the conferences or the expos, they're going there because I don't really feel that they're just curious. I feel that they are going because they are looking for, you know, the, the piece of the puzzle. It could be the last piece yes. of the puzzle, or it could be just a little piece of the puzzle. And when you, go and you um, are, you know, around all the experiences or the speakers and the people that are, you know, sharing their story and what has happened to them, it affects you in one way or the other. So it will unlock what has been hidden and then you can either, you know, choose to pursue it more or not. And most people will choose to pursue it because in this day and age, we know that, you know, it isn't as taboo, of course, to be involved or talk about it. Um, but we have to do this in order to wake us up. Mm-hmm. Yes. I, and you know, one of the most important, important things is that people have to be aware that their ancestors can still talk to them even though they've passed. Mm-hmm. You, you can just, you, they're there and you can, and you, and they've got, they're a lot smarter now than when they were alive. Even. Right. So they're there <laughs> for you too. Yeah. So it was just an eye opening whole thing. Mm-hmm. Can you share any uh, thing or is it too intimate? Oh no. no um, the, the first uh, part of what I learned was uh, that I had, along with um, Geraldine and another person, had been uh, taken to an underground facility. Um, and I'm just going to speak from my experience for what I remember mm-hmm. 
recalled there, I was taken into a separate area. And I remember the there were two men and they were carrying me on the stretcher. And one of them said, this one goes into the containment area. So they were taking me to a containment area. And when I was in there, uh, the, they placed me on a table and one of the the men were they were very agitated you know he was he was upset about this and I remember him saying you know these effing psychics let's just get on with it and Ooh. I know and I you know I could not speak I could not speak and the other one said okay let's you know let's begin and what they did was they put this thin metal band around my around the top of or my forehead and, and to the back of my forehead and it looked like it was attached to uh, something that looked like a lie detector and that one of them said they asked me a question and because I couldn't speak I answered telepathically I'm, I mean I'm just talking in my uh, uh, talking in my mind and when I did that it was recorded on this machine. And then they said uh, something to the effect of, why don't you ask your, you know, um, ETs to help you out? Or uh, they said something, you know, they were needling me to ask them to help help me. So I did. I called out telepathically and I was asking my ETs to help me and they were answering me back and they recorded that also so the I don't know how they did this um uh, you know it was it's wait 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 wait, what did they say what did they say when they answered you back what did they communicate back to you I don't recall that right now I just know that um they talked to me, and that's – I was getting the, the, the whole – you know, the roundabout, the whole thing. But I will, you know, get into the the nitty-gritty of the conversation uh, um, in due time. So when I when I start doing that, uh-huh. I'll, I'll see what they were saying to me. But I – the only the, – the standout point was every conversation that I had, either with them or with my ETs, that was telepathic – it was recorded. Mm-hmm. Wow. And that really was amazing. How can you record a thought? Well, I heard that they were able to now, you know, record what we're thinking. So that is verification. And I don't remember who else said that. Um, you know, it was another experiencer, but you're like verifying that they're able to now record thoughts. So they know what we're thinking. Of. And I had kind of. The thought police, you know, that's like a Orwell's 1984. Oh. They know what we're thinking. <laughs> I had talked to Solaris Blue Raven about this, mm-hmm. and she she was saying, yes, this is what I've been saying that, uh, and I can't remember how she said it, but she had a, a whole term about, uh, you know, what was, what, what had happened with the recording of the thoughts. And I can't remember what it was, but I just kind of looked at her and I said, are you serious? So most of my ride back home was just thinking about, is this for real? And <laughs> what am I supposed to do with this information? And when I asked my people about it, they did say that, yes, I will be getting more information and that there is a reason I'm getting it because I'll be able to use it. So mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know in what capacity but you know, to use is is um, to help me and also to help other people. Right. Wow. <laughs> so this is what happens when we come together in groups yes. like this: is we connect the dots and we get these revelations, and we're, you know, we don't have the answer yet, but we're definitely, um, you know, assembling the pieces of this gigantic puzzle, and I'm. I, anticipating at the end of this rainbow we're going to have some rewards and we'll become more conscious and and revelation see i i haven't had a lot of negative I, 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 my life has been my experiences have been pretty darn well positive 
And <laughs> I'm always feeling guilty, like, well, I didn't have those bad things, and I've had good things happen. So um, was that a good thing or a bad thing? How did you That how happened did you to me? Feeling? Yeah, how um, did that leave you yeah. emotionally? It didn't leave me feeling... Um, bad um i didn't feel scared i just felt kind of like huh you know so i i was in this i'm still in that type of phase and um you know just wondering you know what's up with this and uh why at this time am i you know starting to get that piece of the puzzle and you know where this is going so that's how that's how it left me was I'm still in this uh, what phase <laughs> you know yeah. you know uh, Cassandra I would I would uh, you know if you were the uh, the uh, princess uh, in Priam's castle and you had a very high civilization there in Troy and you could see these um, barbarous Greeks were coming and they want to kill everybody uh, um, you know and you were trying to talk to uh, everybody, you know, it's like that's if that's the condition of the earth right now, and you are Cassandra with that name. What yes. do you want with all <laughs> guidance to tell the people of Earth? That's true. Um, I could see when you when you say that. I mean, there are some some reasons why um, I'm where I'm at right now, and what I'm going to be doing. Um, and I know it definitely, I know it's to help me and to, then to help, uh, humanity who, are, who are waking up and who want to listen. I haven't gotten anything specific. Um, I'm still just, you know, kind of waiting through this and seeing where it's, where it's supposed to take me. I mean, I do accept it. I don't think that I made it up. Um, I'm accepting it, but there's more to it. And I know that. So when that starts to come along, then I could share more and see why this happened or this was brought back to my memory. Again, I know yeah. that the experiencer group that we were in, when when the last memory that I had to get through uh, with my family, with uh, upbringing, I had to get through that last memory in order to break that curse of not talking mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and yes. that breaking the curse of not talking has set me on this, this whole uh, new road because, you know, it, it will be vocal. It will be, uh, you know, in written form or however it's supposed to be, but it's really helped me. And I, I just, I, can't believe the difference and i hope that there are a lot of other people who went there that were changed also because there were so many wonderful speakers and um uh workshops and presenters there that i really felt a kinship to and i know that again this is just Everybody coming together because we're supposed to and mm -hmm. see what's going to happen after that. So I feel like a big momentum has started. And when I get this momentum, it's just it's moving a little slow right now, but it's going to pick up speed really quickly. And I'm talking about, um, you know, other um, conferences or, or expos that you would be putting on and other people would be putting on. It's like this momentum is just moving and it's just going to be a, a, a power ball. And I love it. I love it too. And I hope that people will come together because I took this and I, I'm exhausted. <laughs> and I, I need a team. I'm an Aquarian and we believe in team and tribe and family, extended family. Um, and so I know this isn't about me. This isn't about ego. This is about changing consciousness. I'm a lifelong experiencer. I, I came in, I'm ET, I'm, I'm out of the closet and I, but I'm also human. See that a lot of the people that have, have identified their origins of their soul from other realms and planets and dimensions, we're all human and we're all extraterrestrial. We're all of the above. And when we wake up to that awareness, it's like we're, it's time to have the grand reunion with 
our our galactic or uh, you know universe family, family. yeah mm-hmm. and so please uh, anybody out here who wants to help do the next one we're looking at uh, probably Los Angeles because it's a larger population and I really appreciate everybody that came I mean from uh, the, everybody was incredible the volunteers the audiovisual all the speakers all the attendees I've never seen quite a group like this assembled and I've been doing I've been working on conferences since the the original comic con Star Trek and the monster cons back in the late 60s to early 70s I've been doing this for 50 years I started wow. as a teenager volunteering and we are you're right we're, we have created a momentum and it's uh, this is probably it this is what transforms and creates authentic disclosure and not somebody at the top that's making money on it this isn't about money this is about waking up the whole planet so everybody gets their needs met so we finally balance uh, our human society on all levels and stop destroying our planet and the oceans and anyway we're reaching critical mass i just know something started here and i really appreciate everybody and thank you for saying that because i often wonder if i'm crazy or not like am i crazy (laughs) no and other people go oh uh uh-huh uh-huh and i've been like that all my life because i i came in seeing ghosts and ets and everything and i used to take my girlfriends and say would you like to stay over why i want to show you something so now it's like <laughs> it's it started. So thank you so much. Oh yeah, it has. It definitely has started. I mean, I see a Powerball, and um, it's only going to get bigger and better. Wow. So, um, what are you doing to do personally? What's your next step? Um, my next step is to uh, definitely recall. Uh, what it is that I'm supposed to remember about uh, abductions and to see why, um, how, when, where, I mean, get all the above and to, you know, just open my mind so that I know that that's what I'm doing. Um, I have told my people, you know, I want to know what's going on and they're giving me uh, little by little some some, you know, snippets here and there, but I do know that this is going to be, again, part of another book that I'm writing, mm-hmm. and it's to help, um, again, whoever reads it, it's, it's to help them, mm-hmm. and that's the next thing. I know I'm getting information for something, and it's to, I have already started a book uh, last year, but I think this is going to be like the end part of it. So, you know, there is no ending, but I have to have some kind of ending in a book. And right. this is going to be just the, you know, the next journey. And to remember this, because here's what happens when you start talking about, um, you know, what you've recalled. And you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is truth. Mm-hmm. Then what happens is it when somebody hears it or reads about it or sees you, and you're you're talking about it and you're just standing in your truth, that's going to kind of kickstart them mm-hmm. because I've talked about you know my experiences before and and I on TV shows and I have people that email me and they're saying oh my gosh you know i i had the same experience or i really need to know what's going on and um you know can you help and and that's what you know part of my job is because i'm kind of like a natural born teacher i love to teach Mm -hmm. and when i do that and and help other people realize their experiences or their connection it's not all about just what did you experience it's about your connection to you know the ets or to the the other realms what is your connection because when you get connected then that's when things really start to happen because you're not relying on um uh, you know, false um, information. Uh, you're not relying on what, you know, man says. So the news or um, 
uh, you know, any kind of political things. You're not relying on that. You're relying on your own intuition and you're relying on your uh, ability to connect up to whoever it is that you're connecting to that they give you the answers that you need in order to raise up yourself. So we get out of this, you know, the 3D and we are on a higher level. We still are human, but we're on a higher level. Right. You have direct knowledge. You don't need an inter- intermediary. You don't need a pope or someone else to define you and tell you what your reality is. You're reconnecting the source and you're remembering who you are and where you came from. And often people get, you know, this is what my intention coming down here and this is my mission and my path. And, and then you start really accelerating and going at light speed and there's no greater reward than helping other people. I, I think that is the highest of highs. It's like, you know, it's not about ego. It's just like, I did that, that helps somebody else. And, and that is so freaking awesome. <laughs> to benefit somebody else as well as yourself. It's like, that's the win for all, you know? Well, it's yeah. just helping them to tap into who they are and that's the greatest thing. I, you don't, they don't have to, you know, really, really uh, go to school for years to learn how to do this. The minute that they tap into who they are and, and who they're connected with, um, the last conference I went to in Colorado in August, I had another epiphany. I like going to these conferences now. <laughs> oh, my God, you too. Um, um, when I was driving home, I, before I got on the main road, I'm, you know, driving home and I'm talking to my people and saying, you know, there was a great conference and thanks and everything. And then the next thing I know, I separated from my body. Ooh. <clears throat> so I see myself above myself driving the car. And as soon as that happened, what it did, it did two things. Number one, it reminded me of how I felt when I had my near-death experience because I was out of body. Mm -hmm. And then it also just gave me this huge light bulb moment. And I remember when I was looking at myself and I said, I can do anything. And when I said that, I knew it because I had separated from this, you know, the limitations that the, it's not the body that, that puts the limitations, it's the mind and, you know, the, the thinking and what we've been fed and, um, you know, to think. Uh, I was free of that. And at that moment, I realized I can do anything. And I mm. I was talking to my my people and I'm like, oh, my God. I am a spiritual, powerful, unlimited being. And I knew that when I had died. But when I'm not dead and it happens to me, it's even more impactful. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I, you know, came back into my body and then I'm driving home and it was like a 10 hour drive. So two of those hours, all I did was just sit there and go, wow. Just look at all the things that I can do. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. And I'm talking to my people all the way, you know, for two whole hours. And I was on such a high because I realized that this was truth. Mm -hmm. So all of these things have been coming to me. You know, you just asked a loaded question, so I've been talking like 20 minutes. You know, what have I been doing since the conference? Well, all of these things have been coming to me in order to, I don't know, get me ready to help more people. That's right. the whole thing. That's that's the whole purpose is to help others to open up to who they are and, and to let them know this is real. It's very real. Oh, yeah, this is more than ready then. You're doing it right now. When you're saying, uh, I am a powerful spiritual being, uh, that uh, puts it out to everyone that hears it and they resonate with their powerful spiritual 
uh, being. And, you know, it's, it's this, it, that's what you're, and so this is what happens at a conference like this. We all internalize uh, uh, the uh, Ishideva, the essence of the others that inspire us. And this was a chance face to face to talk to many people that have experiences uh, in, in a place where it honors all the experiences and the lights they can share, um, shed on the reality, uh, the bigger realities of the elephant of life. And I just absolutely love it. When you think about it, most fun of all were these panels where we uh, got to be with our peers. And, the, and then the, we realized the audience, is, it, was like, it was like seminars. It was like person to person, the best conversations you could ever have. Just what you always wanted. I loved mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did too. I, this all came to me in a vision of how I can do this. And, and Sasha and I have been doing like seminars all of our 21 years together. And we've, we've seen all these ahas and spiritual awakenings and coming together. And, and a lot of people say, well, the, these um, conferences are so heady everybody's stuck in their heads and so oh, I, I didn't feel that <laughs> no we got everybody in their hearts and I said right. how did we do this we got everybody in their hearts and I've had some people say did, what did you do how did you do that and I, go, I don't know it's, <laughs> it's all ET it was all ET directed they just said um, I, I said to them if you really want me to do this you've got to send me some yeses because if I put this out there and I get you know, slam down. I, I don't have it within me to just do this. So I have to have some yeses. And as soon as I started to put out there, I mean, the yeses came like an avalanche <laughs> of yeses. And I said, okay, we're supposed to do this. Yeah. And um, I, I really, I put 10 months in it. I didn't realize it. I just, uh, you know, I just woke up every day and it's like, you know, don't bother me. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. And I had to figure it all out, and I kept sending out emails. It was like I was being directed on some super higher level to have enough endurance to do this. So I, I really am grateful to whoever it was that was helping me put this together. And then I was like, I was having anxiety attacks. It's like, oh, man, what if I go there and, you know, people hate it. You know, I've got this whole uh, human stuff going on at the <laughs> same time. And everybody... I mean, there was only, like, one thing, and I'm not going to go into that. There was one thing that happened, but everybody else came over to me, and they were just so kind and loving to me, and they rub my shoulders, and they'd give me <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, kudos. And uh, so by the time, you know, I've been, I came home, uh, what was it, Wednesday night, and I've been sleeping ever since. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, am I going to wake up enough for this show? But I'm so ecstatic that everybody at least everybody that talked to me they were appreciative and, and now this is this is going on um it's not it's not about me it's going on and and i don't think it's going to stop now i think that we this group that got on the plane assembled and paid attention to what had meaning and work and and looked at each other and shared breath and you know hugged each other and looked into each other's eyes and you know had conversation this is the beginning of um Hashtag we are disclosure, the real disclosure. And and uh, anyway, I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but so the, co the coherent, yeah, no, but it's important. We are creating a, what, what uh, you know, uh, Caroline Corey would call this the, a coherent field, which has a certain, it, it extends. And, you, and if you're sensitive, you actually see how many feet away you can walk from a place that's got this thing going and we created that and what did it is that people were talking about their repressed or their suppressed uh stories and as carl rogers my teacher used to say the more i only think i'm talking about carl rogers and nobody else in the whole world the more i'm talking about everybody and so mm -hmm. that's what's happening is we share more and more profound uh, uh private things that we've kept in because we didn't want to mess our jobs up or be ridiculed or something. And we realized, oh my gosh, this is pluralistic ignorance. Everybody has spiritual experiences. Right. And it's a safe place. You know, you, you are uh, with a lot of like-minded people and you go there. I mean, I met so many people, the attendees, that you wouldn't think that they would be at you know, an ET UFO conference, 
just by the outside look of them. But when you start talking to them, they were like, oh, yes, uh huh, yeah, I'm interested in this. And yeah, this happened. And I mean, they opened up. So they came there for a reason. And, um, you know, just to help, you know, put a light bulb moment over somebody else's head and to know that there are a lot of like-minded people that they can uh, connect with and open them up to their own experiences and, again, connect them up to, um, you know, whoever it is that they want to connect to. Uh, it's it's all worth it. Yes. Wow. So, yeah, yeah, it's so ahead, interesting man. about guys. Uh, one of the things that we, we tell people is, you know, go to wherever in your life you really had a spiritual connection, wherever that was, and you can walk out of that context with, with that experience. And uh, you can say, uh, I'll bring my guide with me or I'll, I'll look for whatever guy is most appropriate for me at this time. But I'm taking all that spirituality, which is my own contact with spirit out of the context and seeing what's the right guidance for me now. So you never lose it. It's always there for you. Right. So this next book that you're writing, have you have you written any chapters yet, or you just have the outline? What's oh no, I I've written uh, some chapters. I started last year on this book, and it's called From Earth to the Stars. And mm. I was writing the part uh, where I'm I'm just. You know, being very candid, like I grew up and, you know, what happened and and then I, you know, go into this and I go into that. But the part that I put it away last year because I couldn't be totally open and expose myself to or, or other people to what really happened to me and I put it away because I thought this is, you know, this is nonfiction and I need to be truthful about it. But I thought, well, maybe, you know, one day I'll be able to write the truth and, you know, not worry about what someone may or may not say. And then I'll, you know, continue on because the part about me um, writing when I started with my ET experiences or my near death experience, that was easy. And then, you know, starting with my ET experiences, that was easy also. Um, it was, you know, easy to write out. But to talk about uh, my childhood and the things that went on there, which I shared with uh, Sasha when we were in the group, that I was raised in a satanic home. And with that, I had a lot of uh, threats about talking and that was now I found out that what we had um, uncovered in the experiencer group that was the last and it was also the first threat that was ever said to me so I was at the very foundation of what had kept me from talking and when I did that, I, I, you know, like we said, it's like I broke that curse. And when I broke that curse, that means that I can speak about that and I could speak about everything else. So I can't, I, you know, I just can't thank you enough for helping me with that. Because if anything, I went there to get this release mm -hmm. and, and to, um, you know, be able to, go on and help other people and it is you know you're you are exposing yourself but it wasn't the exposure that was freaking me out it was the telling mm -hmm. and and now i can tell no you know cassandra it's like i i was moved to hear your strong voice and your wisdom and have you come out and i was sent there uh, by divine uh, intervention is the synchronicity because we need you and your strength. 
Oh, I know. I, it was at 8 o'clock in the morning, and I'm telling you, you two, that is not a good look on me. <laughs> so I I was like, oh, okay, you know, well, I got to go because I'm, you know, I'm supposed to be there. And, you know, the universe just picked me up and got me ready, and I was there by 8 o'clock, wow. like 10 minutes before 8 o'clock, but I was still there. And I remember meeting uh, Sasha in the restaurant. It's like coffee, coffee, coffee. <laughs> you know, yeah, coffee let's <laughs> let's let's wake up. And then, uh, you know, we went into that group, and it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Wow, I I loved it. <laughs> and and I was just I was just saying, well, who goes where? And the, like this divine hand, yes, was just direct me to put. Everybody, and I, I heard that over, like that was a perfect thing, and I, I hope that was, was uh, true for a lot of people because it, it wasn't me. There was some higher force uh, working through me to, and t- people go, how did you, how did you select those, those people for that panel or whatever? I, I heard it about. I go, it's not me. This was ET. <laughs> this was ET. <laughs> right. So. But I wonder how many, I mean, I've heard as a therapist, a, a hypnotherapist, I've heard about this huge satanic movement in our human American society. And I just wonder, you know, the true stats on that, like how many people were subjected to that. And my neighborhood where I grew up was, it looked like, um, you know, Leave it to Beaver and to the Nelsons. But underneath it, there was so much perversion and um, ritual abuse, and um, I don't. Want, I, it was like child trafficking. Nobody disappeared, but they were definitely people were used in porn films and all kinds of things. Wow. Horrendous that we found out later. Um, I don't know what, what I'm asking. I'm just. I feel. I feel for people. I just feel this great compassion because. Every time I hear about these things, it just, it's shocking, and it blows my mind. And I just wonder, like, if anybody out there is having the same type of experiences. I don't want to get too personal. Uh, if you maybe you want to share a little bit about your revelation, but if it's too personal, please honor yourself. Um, you mean that day when I had the breakthrough? Yeah, like what was going on in your situation? Um, what was going on? I had, uh, I was going to actually, I did drive to the conference on Wednesday. I wanted to get there a day uh, before. Mm-hmm. So Tuesday night, um, I, you know, got everything ready and I actually went to bed early. And when I was in bed, I was feeling very, very nauseous. And I thought, what is going on here? And what ended up was I was vomiting for probably two hours. Mm. And it was, it was, you know, it was so bad. I mean, my ribs hurt. That's how bad it was. And I remember uh, just, and I thought there's no reason for me to be doing, I was perfectly fine. And I thought, I'm, I'm just kind of laying there and, and I said, finally, I was asking my people, I said, if this is not, you know, mine, then take it away. And then I said, enough, I'm not going to have any more of this. And when I did that, I went to bed and then I got up the next morning, <clears throat> drove to the conference, like, you know, the walking dead, but I got there <laughs> and I, you know, spent the, the night recovering and then, uh, the next morning, I was telling uh, Sasha about it, and I said, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't know if, you know, people, you know, there are unseen forces that don't want me to be here um, or, or, you know, whatever the deal is because, I, you know, I feel like I was spiritually attacked. And then Sasha was, you know, asking me about what happened. And I said, well, the first time I made it just just to the kitchen, and I said I just was, you know, throwing up in the garbage can. And, and he said, well, what does that look like? And I said, I didn't want to look at it to begin with. Why don't I look at it now? <laughs> but, but I did, you know, I'm not going to resist. And I said, you know what it looks like? I said, it looks like worms. And... 
he didn't, I thought that was really strange. And he said, what are, what, what are they about? And I said, they're about, that's their job. And I said, I don't understand this. But then, then the epiphany just hit me. It's like, oh my God, it's because I'm going to talk. And this is the uh-huh. thing that they threatened me with. This was the first memory that if I did, then this would happen. Uh-huh. So when you're when you're a little kid and, you know, somebody threatens you and says, if you say anything, then you're going to be, you know, your belly's going to be full of worms and you're going to be, you know, throwing uh-huh. them up. Oh my that God. that that makes an impact. Of course. So wow. when when I realized that and the light bulb just came on, I went, "Oh my God! This is the this is the foundation memory. This is the where very the, the very beginning." And I realized it I saw it as it was not a truth you know I'm not a little kid anymore I I realized Mm -hmm. um, the truth of it and then I just snapped it in half and broke it and that that you were gonna your belly was gonna blow up with worms my parents parents so you know I can't say anything right right but you know, they also will give an example of it because when I was seeing that, I saw the example. Of, there was another kid that they he demonstrated, and I don't know if they just put worms in his mouth or whatever, but he demonstrated what would happen. So that, you know, visual and that threat mm-hmm. was very, very real to me. Right. But the minute that I got it, it was an incredible release, you know, a release and a purging of, of years, years of this um, keeping the secret. Are they still alive? I don't know. I don't know. You escaped them. Right. Good. Yeah, and good. so we, we take, you know, the next step, which is really good, is that You don't have to uh, blab everything. If it's in your interest, you can be silent. So Mm -hmm. you don't have to automatically be silent, and you don't have to automatically blab. You get to be centered, and that's you know that's that's what that's what I uh, I got happened to you, and I and that's really empowered, and I can really feel the difference from a woman who arrives sick, barely barely making it to somebody who's really empowered. Mm-hmm. Oh, it made a huge impact, a huge impact. And this is what I've been waiting for, you know, half my life, um, because I didn't know what the thing was that, you know, kept me silent. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 my friends would say when I was on a radio show, they'd say, why didn't you just tell them, you know, what, what your childhood was like and it's like well you know I didn't I didn't want to go into that but it wasn't that it was that part of me that said I can't talk Mm -hmm. and if you realize it wasn't hard for me just to say what was going on and this is like a major breakthrough so yeah when when I'm talking about it I know that there's a reason I'm talking about it so whoever's listening to this you know who knows um, how this is going to help them, and it's not. I can just tell a- you one. Mm-hmm. If you do have, uh, if you need to go into a, an emergency and there's somebody threatening you, and you put a big circle in the middle of your hand, all the people in the medical uh, emergency room are know to call the police and they can help you. If you need to do that, you make this circle in the middle of your hand. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. <laughs> That's a good thing to know. Yeah, I didn't either. Wow. Well, one of the, the ideas we've been toying with is doing these, um, like, intensives in a, you know, semi-private location where people can really go into, you know, this this deeper kind of darker level to help healing and clearing this energy. Because uh, as we clear it individually, we clear it collectively. Mm-hmm. And that's one way to change 
the continuum for all of existence. So we we, we need to free ourselves from this extremely perverted and negative matrix that's been, you know, imposed upon this uh, humanity, you know, this continuum since who knows when. This is, goes back, you know, millennium. So it's, it's, I think it's time to do something like that. And anyway, I'm just putting it out there. We have two minutes before we are finished with today. What would you like to tell? What do you want our listeners to know? Uh, just keep on searching, keep on seeking. Uh, if you'd like to get a hold of me, you can uh, go to my website, CassandraVanZant.com, and uh, there's a phone number there, or you can, um, you know, email me, and that's CassandraVanZant at Outlook.com. So help yourself. Yes, yes. And, um, yeah, please go over. I don't have a mailing list yet. Um, I'm going to get this all together. For uh, we're, we're gathering people who might want to continue the work, to work with all of us to heal humanity in this this whole uh, arena here, which has become so dark and perverted. But I think it's the darkest before the dawn. And yes. I, I, I'm so glad that, Cassandra, that you were part of this this launching and the opening of the Stargate. Sash, final words to you. Or Cassandra, well, final words to you. Just, you know, so this, yeah, I see everybody got a chance to hear Cassandra. And uh, uh, this is a, a, a person who it's really worth tuning into and seeing, look at their website and, and uh, you can relate to who she is. Okay, much love and blessings and aloha. We'll see you on Tuesday. Aloha. Radio at freedomslips.com. Any commercial advertising you may hear in this program is of the sole discretion and benefit of the host of whose program you are listening to. Revolution Radio does not endorse any commercial products, nor does it accept monetary compensation for on-air advertising of commercial products, nor will it ever. We are and shall remain 100% listener supported. Any product advertising on this program are considered used at higher risk, and Revolution Radio shall not be held liable for any claims or damages received from any product advertised within this program. Revolution Radio, where information never sleeps. for tuning in to Revolution Radio. Here at Revolution Radio, we are listener-sponsored and commercial-free, but there still are bills to pay. In order to raise some needed funds to cover the cost, our station is offering a silver special. In the continental United States for a $60 donation, or in Alaska, Hawaii, or Canada for a $70 donation, we will send you an uncirculated 2018 one-ounce pure silver eagle. The $70 donation, uh, the extra 10 is to cover shipping, by the way, outside of the continental United States. When making the donation, you must put Silver Eagle promo in the notes on the donation. And thank you for tuning in to Revolution Radio at revolution.radio and freedomslips.com. Without you, there is no less. Revolution Radio, where information never sleeps. Take a look around, kid. What do you see? Homes being foreclosed. People working two, three jobs just to put food on the table and still drowning in debt. Don't get me wrong. 
country was founded on great ideals and principles. They've all been ruined by the banks. Open your eyes to the banks that are robbing you. You know who my favorite president was? Who? Thomas Jefferson. Because he saw all of this coming and tried to stop it. He fought the banks. JFK too, and they killed him for it. The banking institution is more dangerous than an army, he said. He also said that every generation needs a revolution, Jimmy. The American dream is just that. Just a dream. War is a continuation of politics. Only by other means. Politics is a continuation of economics by other means. This is our bank. This is our war.